Hello learners, welcome to NIO Senior Secondary Biology course. I am Dr. Babita Srangu Kola. I teach botany in Zakir Hussain Delhi College, which is a constituent college of University of Delhi. We have discussed respiration and its types and now we shall be discussing cellular respiration and uh, so the objectives of cellular respiration are to understand the flow chart that shows series of enzymes that are used in various reactions of different stages of cellular respiration and to explain how energy is actually released and stored in the form of ATP during the process of cellular respiration and also the large amount of ATPs that are produced in during this process, how to uh, account for these um, and account of these ATPs that are released during this aerobic respiration. Now respiration is divided into three stages. The first stage is glycolysis. During glycolysis, glucose which is a 6 carbon molecule, it splits into two, three carbon molecules known as pyruvates. This sequence is an enzyme related controlled uh, series of reactions and in this the first step, this is further divided into three subphases. The first is phosphorylation, phosphorylation of glucose that is activation of glucose to produce fructose 1,6-diphosphate and this activation is carried out with the help of two ATPs. Second is splitting of glucose into three carbon sugar phosphates and these two products are interconvertible and the reason that glycolysis has this pathway has got the name glycolysis is because of the splitting of glucose into these two interconvertible products and then oxidation by dehydrogenation where each carbon sugar phosphate is oxidized by the removal of hydrogen and uh, NAD is reduced to NADH and a lot of uh, ATPs are produced. Now, uh, this is the pathway of glycolysis. In this pathway, as you can see, glucose is activated with the help of ATPs and it uh, releases, it uh, forms glucose 6-phosphate. Another ATP is utilized to produce fructose 1,6-diphosphate. Now, here comes the splitting part where glucose is split into three carbon sugar phosphates. These two products are basically interconvertible and this, these two products by the process of oxidation release two pyruvic acid molecules and here in this step you can see NAD is reduced to NADH and also directly ATP is produced as a molecule of energy. Now this figure basically depicts the energy um, intake and the energy harvest of glycolysis. You can see in the beginning a chain, a bead of six molecules, these represent glucose six carbons of glucose which are broken down into three molecules each as you can see bifurcation uh, leading to three molecules each along with them each phosphorus atom is attached which means the glucose is activated by the uh, first step which is marked as number one. Here ATP is utilized, two molecules of pyruvic acid are eventually produced, eventually produced as the end product of glycolysis. During this as step two you can see NAD. Uh, can, can, gets converted into NADH and also ATP is released at step 3. So in this process you can see initially it has taken up energy. So that is um, in the in beginning of glycolysis energy is taken up and in the later part of glycolysis energy is harvested and the end products of glycolysis are pyruvic acid. This pyruvic acid is eventually used up by the cycle for uh, another cycle the spiruvic acid which is end product of glycolysis undergoes decarboxylation that is it releases carbon dioxide and dehydro dehydrogenation and it leads to the formation of acetyl coenzyme A. Now this acetyl coenzyme A is essentially the link between glycolysis and Krupp's cycle. Now you can see this is mitochondria and the inner fold links of this which are known as Christi basically increase the surface area and uh, this scrub cycle takes place in mitochondria and in the matrix of mitochondria. Now the acetyl coenzyme A uh, helps in combining the acetate which is a two carbon uh, molecule from glycolysis that acetate is combined with the help of acetyl coenzyme A and oxalic acid which is a four carbon molecule these two unite to form citrate which is a six carbon molecule. And it is because of citrate that this cycle is known as citric acid cycle. 
this citric acid which is a 6 carbon molecule undergoes decarboxylation as you can see and it le uh, leads to 5 carbon compound with the uh, release of 1 carbon dioxide which is released as a waste product. This 5 carbon compound further releases another carbon dioxide and yields oxaloacetic acid. So, 2 carbon dioxide molecules are released as waste products in this cycle. In addition, you can see NADH is produced at 2 places and FAD is produced as one place and directly ATP is also produced in this cycle. Now, NAD uh, produces 3 ATP molecules and FAD produces 2 ATP molecules. The reason for this is that FAD joins this uh, cycle later that is why the amount of energy produced by FAD is lesser than that of ATP mole, uh, NAD molecules. That is all about this clipping. Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle. Now, this cycle was given by Sir Hans Krebs in 1930 and this cycle is also known as tricarboxylic acid cycle shortly as TCA cycle. Now, in this cycle what happens that acetyl group which is a 2 carbon group enters the Krebs cycle that takes place in the matrix of mitochondria. Now, this is the pathway of Krebs cycle where pyruvic acid is converted into 2 carbon acetate. This 2 carbon acetate combines along with, uh, with the help of acetyl coenzyme A forms citric acid and citric acid is a 6 carbon compound which eventually undergoes decarboxylation leads to the formation of ketoglutaric acid which is a 5 carbon compound and this again undergoes decarboxylation as you can see another carbon dioxide coming out leads to the formation of oxaloacetic acid which is a 4 carbon compound and this eventually again uh, combines with acetate which is a 2 carbon. So, 2 carbons of acetate and 4 carbons of oxalic acid make 6 carbons of citric acid that is the name this is the reason that this uh, pathway has been given the name of citric acid cycle. So, this releases uh, lots of energy in the form of ATPs, in the form of NADH and in the form of FADH molecules. Now, what is the significance of this Krebs cycle? as well as acetyl coenzyme A. See the, during this uh, process lots of reduced enzymes and coenzymes are produced. In this process uh, sometimes when the fatty acids are used they are oxidized by beta oxidation and in Krebs cycle um, these intermediates which are released they are used in the synthesis of uh, various other biomolecules like amino acids, nucleotides, chlorophyll and also fat molecules which are very essential for the metabolism of the cell. Now, the third stage of uh, respiration is electron transport chain or also known as ETC or oxidative phosph uh, phosphorylation. Now, in this what happens that hydrogen ions are carried on the inner surface of mitochondria that is Christi and they undergo oxidation using uh, molecular oxygen which is uh, eventually uh, used to release a lot of energy and in this process ATP synthesis takes place. ATP is formed from ADP, ATP is adenosine triphosphate which is formed from ADP that is adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphorus which releases ATP and this process is known as oxidative phosphorylation. During these reactions hydrogen is split into hydrogen ions and electrons which are accepted by a series of hydrogen electron acceptors that the whole uh, series ends with the oxygen at the end. This series, uh, the whole series is known as respiratory chain. It will be more clear in this particular figure where you can see the respiratory chain in this NAD gets reduced to NADH releases ATP. FAD gets reduced to FADH, it also releases ATPs and cytochrome C at the end of this respiratory chain takes electrons and transfers these electrons to oxygen which gets reduced to form water which is the oxygen is the ultimate uh, electron and hydrogen acceptor in this process of respiratory chain. The reason a person who is deprived of oxygen for some time cannot survive is that uh, if this oxygen is not supplied to the cells then uh, there won't be any hydrogen transfer and uh, the person will eventually die. Uh, also you know uh, that you know drowning 
uh, if a person drowns for a long time, uh, then he is bound to die. The reason is that the cells are deprived of oxygen, which is an essential part for accepting the hydrogen um, ions and also the electrons, which are energy rich. And if this breaks, this pathway breaks, then no energy transfer takes place. So the cells deprived of oxygen are going to uh, become lifeless soon. Now, in this uh, particular figure, this uh, again emphasizes the role of oxygen in harvesting energy that is derived from the food. Here you can see uh, electrons that are released from uh, the food molecules and they are harvested by NAD, uh, reducing it to NADH and the NADH transfers electrons through a series of proteins to oxygen and during the transfer of these oxygen, these electrons to oxygen, a lot of energy is utilized, is, is released and this energy released is utilized by the cell for various metabolic functions. The oxygen uh, which is the uh, ultimate electron grabber gets reduced to water that is finally released in this process. Now uh, the role of this oxygen which is known as electron grabber, it pulls these electrons down the respiratory chain. And these electrons are basically provided by the fuel that is uh, food molecules. And the role of this oxygen is essentially important because this is the only way that electrons are passed on from one step to the other step. And in this step, they keep on releasing energy bit by bit, which is accumulated by the cell. And ultimately, the oxygen uh, receives all these uh, electrons and hydrogen and releases uh, this energy to the um, uh, to the cell which is ultimately used by the cell for various activities. Now this is an, uh, uh, this uh, table depicts the overall uh, synthesis of uh, production of uh, the yield of ATP per uh, glucose molecule. In glycolysis two ATPs and two NADH are produced. In pyruvic uh, when the pyruvate gets converted with the help of acetyl coenzyme A carbon dioxide is released as you must have um, you we have already seen this carbon dioxide gets released and two ATP molecules are synthesized. There is no FAD synthesized in both these uh, cycles. However, in Krebs cycle four molecules of carbon dioxide, two ATPs are synthesized and six NADH are synthesized. Each NADH gives rise to three ATPs. So, if we sum up these NADs, they are 10 NADs and uh, they can be multiplied by a factor of 3 as each produces 3 ATPs. So, this becomes 30 ATPs and FAD produces 2 ATP. So, there are 4 ATPs, uh, there are 2 uh, FADH2 each producing 2 ATP molecules. So, 2 ATP molecules uh, giving rise to 4 eventually 4 ATPs and uh, the entire um, process of respiration is summed up here. Uh, to show the formation of ATPs through directly through ATP synthesis um, from the oxidative phosphorylation and also from NADH and FADH2. Now, plants have uh, another um, feature in them that their metabolism is amphibolic, which means that they carry out photosynthesis, which is an anabolic pathway where carbon dioxide and water are utilized in the presence of essentially in the presence of sunlight and starch is synthesized and energy is released. And this energy, this um, uh, uh, the products of this anabolic pathway, they are utilized by in respiration which is a catabolic pathway, the catabolic means breaking down of glucose and uh, to, re, uh, to yield carbon dioxide water and energy. So, since these processes that is anabolic and catabolic both are happening in the plants that is why they are known to have amphibolic pathway. The light intensity that uh, at which photosynthesis uh, just you know equals the respiration rate is known as compensation point. So, what essentially happens in compensation point is the carbon dioxide that is consumed in photosynthesis this equals the amount of carbon dioxide that is generated in respiration. So, uh, learners to sum up what we have understood in part 2, uh, we have understood that respiration is essentially made up of 3 stages. It constitutes um, glycolysis, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. We have also understood the biochemical pathways that underlie these 3 metabolic um, cycles 
and also how ox food is oxidized to release energy for the functioning of body and other activities. Thank you.